and he looks like a surefire stud for years to come in the NBA, uh, potential all-star very soon, in my opinion, is I, I encourage you to buy a star stock A on star stock right here. And here's the reason why. Ladies and scrubs, we are back for another edition of Sports Card Radio. Now, I know on recent episodes, we had some difficult topics we had to discuss. We poured one out for the Ja Morant investors. We had to take a moment of silence for the Zion Williamson investors. But I do want to take a moment today and acknowledge the LA Dela Cruz investors who are still popping champagne after he hit for the cycle the other night. Now, since his amazing performance, he has cooled off some. He, he's got one hit in his last 17 at-bats. Baseball's a tough game. It's going to humble you, especially the younger players. But L.A. De La Cruz card prices are in still some cases 10x higher than they were just a few short months ago. And it brings me to the point of this video. Where have all the sports card investors gone? L.A. De La Cruz didn't necessarily appear out of nowhere. I'm sure he's been on the radar of Reds fans. He's been on the radar of some savvy sports card collectors. His one of one Super Fractor, for example, sold for a little over $8,000 a year ago. You don't think this card hasn't 10x in value, but where were all the investors telling you to buy LA De La Cruz the same way they told you to buy Luca, Trey, Zion, and Ja? I would buy Ja Morant cards. With the market and card prices at near two to three year lows, is it now a good time to be investing in some sports cards? Jeff Wilson Bo got so much backlash for telling you to buy at the literal all-time highs of the sports card market star stock that he's scared to make content about actual sports card investing anymore. Here he is saying just the other day that he's trying to make content that is positive, welcoming, showcases kid collectors, and the father-son connection. Where was any of this talk? When the market was at its very peak, Jeff. I think that Will Greer right now is about four times better of an investment than Kyler Murray. Baseball is one of the few sports where a player can 10x his value overnight. When was the last time a quarterback in football besides Brock Purdy 10x their value? Damar Hamlin, cards probably 10x in value last year but he nearly had to lose his life to do so. Jalen Hurts, the Eagles quarterback, his cards did go up in value, but in the case of his Prism rookie, it appears you could have only 5 extra your money if you bought at the lows and sold at the very, very, very high points. Patrick Mahomes' cards, for example, actually went down in a year in which he won the Super Bowl. Yeah. Unfortunately for you in the hobby, Jeff Wilson doesn't watch much baseball. Boba Shack. It's clear in the videos that he makes and the way he talks about the game. Most investors who came along in the last couple years only care about the NFL and NBA. It's unfortunate you didn't have anybody in the hobby telling you that the biggest gains in the sports card world often happen on the baseball side where you can actually 10x your investment. It has happened to other baseball players not named L.A. De La Cruz this year. I only follow Giants prospects, but all of my Casey Schmidt, Patrick Bailey, and Luis Matos cards that I've been buying for the better part of a year have all gone up in value and in some cases 10 x The hobby often only hypes a few prospect names in baseball. Before the season, it was Anthony Volpe, Julio Rodriguez, Jordan Walker. None of those guys have 10 x the value of their cards since the start of the season. But there will be several players, I just named four, who will 10 x the value of their cards during this baseball season. Jeff Wilson never told you guys this, that if you actually want to be a sports card investor, you better be able to sit through some baseball games. It's simple supply and demand in some cases. Tops can't make rookie cards of baseball players until they get called up. So the Bowman cards and any other offerings of someone like L.A. De La Cruz are suddenly going to become in demand if he, say, for instance, gets called up and hits for the cycle. In basketball and football, 
Panini often saturates and often floods the market before these players are able to mature and establish themselves in the league. When a player like L.A. De La Cruz gets national attention, you're often able to sell your cards for a premium because there isn't as much supply on the market as there is in football and basketball. Bo Bichette of the Los Angeles Dodgers. I personally think Dela Cruz is a sell now. Like, look, he just hit for the cycle. It's hard to keep actually going higher than that and keep having uh, better games than that. But if you're a Reds fan, I certainly don't blame you for holding any of his cards. I will blame you if you don't join us for our live stream tomorrow night. We will be on the lookout for these missing sports card investors. Will the government regulate box breaking? These breakers better hope their congressman wasn't reading a latest article from ESPN this week. We will discuss all of that and more Thursday night, 5.30 p.m. Pacific time. Come join us, I guess, unless there's a Reds game going on. We'll see you next time. Clear! <laughs>